Hello everyone, and welcome to the 25th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can combine type ID with protocols that we've been learning in the last tutorial. So basically, um, just to recap what we learned in the previous tutorials, and again, I'm actually going to be using files um, from the last tutorial as well, so if you have your last tutorial, Lesson 24, lying around, you can use most of the files that we did in that tutorial in this one. So I'm basically going to run you through the files that we have for this um, lesson, and then you can just either copy them or make new ones as uh, you would like. So basically in the last tutorial we worked on our little logging protocol here, and this was just made in logging.h, and all it is is basically a protocol, and again a protocol just lists a bunch of methods, just the names and their parameters, return type, etc., just the name of the method, and all it has is that. That's all that a protocol ever lists. It doesn't have any of the implementation, just the names of the methods. So with that said, this is basically all of our required methods for this logging protocol. And if something is going to now conform to the logging protocol, that means it's required to implement those methods. So anything that conforms to logging will have to implement our log method that you see right here. So pretty simple, and uh, if you don't really remember this stuff, just go back to the last tutorial. So uh, with that said, we can go now to our person object here. And our person object is basically the same as the dog one that I think I had you do for the last tutorial. Uh, it's not really any different, it's just a person, so I just changed the name really. So all we have to do for this is import logging.h, and we just have to say that person is going to conform to the logging protocol. Pretty simple. And uh, we also just have an integer of age as well for this person object. I also just added a property uh, just to kind of remind you how properties work, but I don't really use this property in this tutorial, so if you want to leave it out, be free to. So really the main parts of this are just importing our, um, pro our protocol file, and then just saying we conform to that protocol, and just this integer of age. So now that we have that, of course we have to implement this somehow. So we do that in person.m, of course, and in our at sign implementation. And all we have to do here is, uh, of course, this synthesize age is optional if you have um, the proper or the yeah the property in the previous section. So if you made a property over here, of course you're going to want to synthesize that. But if you didn't make a property, you obviously don't have to synthesize it. So the main parts of this though are, of course, these two methods: init and log. So the init is pretty self-explanatory. All it does is assigns our age a value of 6. And then we have our log method, which all that does is nslog something saying I am blank years old, filling in that blank with the age. So that's what um, our person class looks like. Pretty basic. This is just normal class stuff by now and should be second nature. So now let's actually learn what we wanted to learn about in this tutorial. So um, what we want to first off do is we want to create a new person object. So go ahead and make sure you're importing person.h, of course, if you want to use the person object. So go ahead, person, me, let me just say person, alloc, init. And now we just, of course, we created our person object. And before I forget with this tutorial, I'm just going to make sure I release this as well. And for whatever reason, I tend to forget uh, these releases in these short tutorials because I'm not focusing on memory management. But just make sure that uh, for these tutorials and for yourself, you're remembering uh, memory management for these. It's not too important for the Coco uh, tutorials, and maybe that's why I'm getting a little off on it. But it's uh, certainly important for iOS, so make sure you're remembering to uh, release any of the objects that you create. And of course, if you forget how to do that, just look back on uh, memory management tutorials. So that uh, just makes sure our memory is cleaned up after we create our person object and basically when we're done with it of course it will clean itself up. So now what we want to do is talk really about what we want to talk about for this tutorial. So ID and ID and protocols basically. So um, we've kind of looked at ID a little bit and the only place we've really seen it is with our init method. So the init method returns a type ID, 
And what does really ID mean in, you know, what does it really mean? And basically, it's just a generic object pointer. So anytime you use the init method, you can use it for pretty much any object. And I'm sure you figured that out by now. Any object that we have, we usually use this alloc init uh, kind of concatenation here. And init returns any object. It just returns, it will return a person, an NS array, any object that we are working with. And so ID is basically just a generic object pointer. And that's why, again, our init method returns ID, because it doesn't know what exactly it's going to return, so it just returns a generic pointer, and that's our type ID. So we can also use ID to create objects. So if we want, we can just say ID, and we can just say, you know, um, person or something. So we can just say ID person, and, you know, we just created a new object. Uh, pretty simple. It doesn't contain anything, but it's just a generic object pointer. That's what ID is. And if we wanted, we could say person gets me. And now our person object is just pointing to our me object that we created right here. So that's, um, you can see how this can kind of be useful. This basically works with anything. We can just say, we can declare any ID object or uh, generic object pointer. And now our person is just pointing to me and it can use our me object. So we can just say person and we could say person log because again our person object is now the same thing as our me object it's the same thing so our person when we say person log we're basically just saying me log uh, again since our person is just pointing to me so when uh, we just say person log here and that should work the exact same as if we said me log so let's just go ahead and run this and as you can see I am six years old so uh, as you can see, it's just basically ID you can create an object out of. Just note that you don't need the star. Uh, um, you don't need the star in front of your name. You just need to say the name like you would for an integer or something along those lines. So ID is just again a generic object pointer, and you can point to any object that you want with it. So it's very general and it allows for some great flexibility. But, of course, you can also um, make your ID a little more specific if you want. So let's say, for example, we would like some any object that conforms to our logging protocol. So now we've specified an object, any object that we can possibly use, but it conforms to our logging protocol. So we can just say ID logging. We can call it logger as our object, and that'll just be the name of it. And then if we want, we could just say logger gets me like we did before. And of course, we could say logger log. And this works the exact same way. Our ID logger object is just pointing to our me. And the only difference this time is that this makes sure that the object that we're connecting to or pointing to uh, will conform to this logging protocol. And this allows for some interesting checking when we go to run our actual programs because this means that we can have any object but as long as it conforms to logging we can use what we want with it. Um, so it does check for that and therefore we can just call our log object uh, and we don't have to worry because we know that our me object is going to conform to logging. And we can go ahead and run this and you see that it works the exact same way as before. Now, let's just say, for example, we take our logging protocol out of this, and now person doesn't actually conform to logging. And what would this do in our main.m? And if we go ahead and we wait a little bit here, you'll see that we get a little error message saying, you can't basically assign this object because it doesn't really know that it's, uh, it doesn't actually conform to logging. Even though it has the log method still in it, it's still complaining because it it doesn't, you don't say in our person object that you're going to conform to this protocol. So this allows for some good checking uh, when you go to run your program, or before you run your program, I should say, but it really checks to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So by specifying that our ID object uh, is, a, again, a generic object pointer, but we're specifying that it will um, conform to our logging protocol. And since in our case here, 
our person object now doesn't conform to our logging protocol, so now it's going to complain about that. So uh, let's go ahead and just put that back in now that I've showed you that example. And we'll just say again, it conforms to logging. So now that you've understood a little bit about ID, you can see how it can be useful. It's just, again, a generic object pointer, and you can make it as specific almost as you want. You can even uh, make a comma here as well and add another protocol if you wanted to the list. So you can make your object as specific as you want in, in uh, terms of protocols. So that's um, ID, and it's again generic object pointer, can point to anything, and you can also specify different protocols that you would like the object to conform to. So it's pretty useful, and I'm sure you'll find some good use for it later on. So now let's uh, just do something else with protocols here in our objects, and we can just see um, possibly a way that we would use protocols in runtime. So if we were actually running a program and we were testing different objects, how could we test to see if they run um, or if they would actually conform to different protocols when we run our program. So let's say we have you know, a list of um, maybe an NS array of different objects and we're cycling through them and we'd like to see if these certain objects conform to these protocols. So we can do that with just saying if and we can say if me conforms to protocol and then we can use a directive at sign protocol and we just say the protocol name. So in this case, our protocol name is logging that we'd like to see if it conforms to. And all this uh, is checking for is to see, it's saying, hello, does me conform to the protocol? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. We're saying, does me conform to the protocol logging? And if yes, then we would like to do something with that. So probably what we'd like to do is just say um, me log. So what this allows us to do is uh, any time in our program we could just check to see if any object would conform to this protocol. And again, this would work with anything, even if we had an ID or a general object pointer in here, we could still do the same thing. We could say, uh, we could still check to see if it conforms to a certain protocol, and then we can put any protocol that we want in there. And then in this case, we are confirming that uh, me does conform to our logging protocol, and then we could go ahead and log that safely. And then there we go, we go ahead and run it, and as you can see, I am six years old, and it works fine. So these are just a few things that you can do with protocols, and it is a nice way. Um, it's a nice way to just compare different objects, even if the objects don't seem related whatsoever, as long as they conform to a certain protocol, you can still uh, you can still know that they will work with certain things. So that's the nice thing about protocols is that they even though objects could be totally different and not have any similar meaning to each other, as long as they conform to the same protocol, they could operate the same way, and you could run the same methods that you do on those objects that you would with another one. So that's the really nice thing about protocols and ID as well. ID allows you to point to any object that you feel you would like to point to, and of course you can always check to see if that object conforms to that protocol. So anyway, um, that's pretty much all I had for this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and uh, just subscribe to the channel, and click the ads if you're feeling nice. Alright, I'll see you next tutorial.